Looking at social media from Scotland has been really, really depressing. Um, and I think we're going to be in for the same thing. Your results this year are calculated grades. So teachers had to submit two bits of information. They had to submit which grade they thought you were going to get. And then within that grade, they had to rank you based on how confident they were you were gonna get that grade. So one down to 20, for example, getting a six for GCSE maths. I know those aren't exact numbers, but one being the most confident, the person they thought were most confident to get that grade, and on a really good day would probably maybe get a high grade, but they're not very sure about it. Down to the person at the bottom of the rankings who would get that grade on a good day if they did loads of revision, but maybe, maybe not. So most confident, at least confident within the grade boundaries. Now, teachers worked very hard to submit these grades. They spent a lot, a lot of time working out exactly which grade they thought you should get, and then within those grades, working out the rank orders. The problem is, now, I know not of you aren't gonna believe this next statement, your teachers are really nice. Yes, your teachers are really nice, and then what they've done is they've over predicted your grades. You know, they've said that the grades that they think you're gonna get, they're basically too high, by about 10%, which is quite a lot. The point of um, exam grades, standardizing everything, which they do every single year by moving the grade boundaries up and down, is that each year's exams look roughly the same as the other ones. And the problem with teachers over predicting your grades by you know, quite a big percentage, is that if they just gave you those grades, then this year's exams will be a lot better than last year's exams, which would be unfair to the people that sat exams last year. And then next year, when hopefully people will sit exams, comparing them to the 2020 cohort, they're not gonna look very good. So the idea is um, to make all the years look roughly even, but at the moment, 2020 cohort are looking like you're all geniuses because you all did really, really well. Um, so this is where standardization has come in. Now, there were certain areas where we saw a lot of overprediction, specifically kind of like grade fours in English and maths, unsurprisingly, because if you get below a grade four, then you're going to have to, to retake it. So teachers, we're trying to be nice, hedge on the side of caution, just get everyone over, well, everyone, lots of people over there. And then B's at A level. So they gave a lot more grade fours and a lot more B's than would normally be expected, um, which is a problem. So the result of this is it means that teacher grades aren't going to be taken into account and the results are going to be standardized based on the previous performance of the school and a little bit of key stage two data um, and the rank order. Um, which means, and I don't, I don't wanna depress everyone, I don't wanna put this bluntly, but it means all the work that you actually did, all the work that you've actually done um, in, you know, year 11, the bit that we had of it, year 10, year nine, the whole way through school, the work that you've actually done isn't being taken into account. It is literally mapping your year to last year and saying this, this is what it's gonna be. Now, um, I know you are feeling a whole wide range of emotions at the moment, and you are allowed to feel all of these emotions. No one can tell you how you should be feeling, how you shouldn't be feeling. I'm sure you're feeling angry at the, the system. I'm sure you're feeling frustrated that your work isn't being taken into account. I'm sure you're feeling that this is hugely, hugely unfair. And yes, you are right everything that you are feeling at the moment, you are allowed to feel. You are allowed to feel angry at the system. Um, but don't feel angry at your teachers, don't feel angry at the exam boards, it's not their decision, the government has made the decision, this has come down from Ofqual. Um, feel angry at the world, feel angry at viruses. Um, yes, this is completely unfair because it is going to mean that some people that would have got really good grades aren't going to get really good grades. Um, but try, instead of thinking how unfair this is, try and think what we can do to fix this problem. So, I know a lot of you are going to be feeling very, very angry, and I think it's really important that you take the time and you take the space to 
you know, potentially go through a grieving process for your grades to take time to process those emotions and then see where we are on the other side. Now, this is coming out before GCSE results day, so a lot of you are still going to be in turmoil. Until we get the results, we can't act on them. We can't do anything about them. But I would ask you that even if you're disappointed with your results, uh, but you've got onto the next stage in your life, whether it's going to sixth form, whether it's onto an apprenticeship, or whether it's onto university, if your grades are good enough to get you onto that place, or even if they're not good enough to get you onto that place, but places still accept you anyway, I'm asking you to be annoyed, I'm asking you to be angry, but to say this is just one of those things that's happened during a truly, truly awful time in the world. And there's not a lot of point doing anything about it. If you've gone to a place, I wouldn't, in your, if I was in your situation, I wouldn't go through the appeals route because there is no real appeals route this year and I wouldn't race it. I would just move on with the next stage in your life. Because this is an awful situation. It's an awful situation for you waiting for your exam results. It's an awful situation for your schools, your teachers. It's an awful situation for the whole country. It's an awful situation for the whole world. And we are not out of this yet. We are in the middle. We are at the bottom, close to the bottom, just coming up from the bottom, we don't really know yet because we're still in the midst of it. So this is awful, but it's awful for everyone, okay? And until we come out through the other side, we can't really look back and say, we should have done this differently because there is no perfect situation. There is no ideal situation. There was no way you could have sat your exams. They tried to come up with something, it didn't work, so they've been forced to come up with something else. So there is no perfect solution to what's happened in this awful situation. Anyway, let's talk about how they actually decided your grades this year. The grades admitted this year were higher than normal because, believe me, your teachers are really nice. Now, They've been about 10% higher than normal and the examples of call have seen this when they've looked at all of the data as a whole, not on an individual school basis. Which means it's really hard for them to go back to an individual school and say, we think your grades are a bit high, can you lower them? And for them to go to another school and we think your grades are a bit low, can you raise them a bit? So because they can't pull out individual school data like that, they can only see it on a national level. They don't know which schools have been overpredicting. They don't know which schools were absolutely bang on with their data. And they don't know which schools were under predicting. So because they can't work that out, they've had to go across a national and do something to everybody. And I want to tell you again, this is not the exam board's decision. This is not the school's decision. This is not the teacher's decision. This is the government's decision. Okay. So this has been mandated to everybody and they all got to do it in the same way. Your school submitted two bits of information, what grade they thought you should get and the rank order. So while the grade isn't being used, the rank order is. So from the best student all the way through to the worst student, that's the rank order that they are using. And then they are looking at the, um, the performance of the 2019 students and saying, if we mapped this rank order to the 2019 students, what would it look like? So for students that are in the middle of the rank, you're probably not going to see much change, but students who are at the top or the bottom, that's where we're going to be seeing changes. So imagine a school has predicted the first two people are nine, and then the next few an eight, and then a seven, and then so on and so on. Ofcall might decide to move these students down a grade. The rank order of the students hasn't changed, but it's been shifted. For some students, there's no change because they've stayed within the same boundary, but others have been moved down a grade. Now this is based on how the school did last year. So a school that has historically good grades will get a matching set of good grades this year. In a really crude and rough sense, it's a bit like saying that if your school had 10 students who got a nine in GCSE maths last year, then this year, the top 10 students in GCSE maths will get a nine. It doesn't matter that if they sat the exam that maybe those students weren't quite as good as last year's students, they would have only got a seven. Or it doesn't matter that actually lots and lots of people worked really hard and that this year, if you sat the exam, 30 students would have got a nine. It doesn't matter because you didn't see the exams and we can never see that. We can never predict that. We are never going to know what has happened. So they've mapped it 
to last year. It's more of a problem in smaller subjects. So maths, English, the big subjects, because there are going to be so many people in each um, grade, shifting the rank orders is only going to affect a small percentage of students. In smaller subjects, it's going to be more of an issue. So for example, arts. If you're at a school that has previously never produced an artist who's got above a grade with C um, at A level or above a 6 at GCSE, if they've always stayed kind of like towards the middle for art, but this year there is a truly amazing, truly brilliant artist in there who's on for that grade 9 and who's on for that A star, well, the standardisation doesn't show that. Now, I don't know if this is exactly going to happen, I'm sure there are going to be examples for and against this coming out, but if they're going to be mapping it to the previous data and there is no previous evidence of students at that school getting that high grade in that subject, then it may not happen this year. Whether they really, really deserve it, it may not happen this year. It is also disproportionately going to affect very, very high performing students in schools that historically don't perform very well. There are so many problems with this. This is far from a perfect solution. But a lot of people, I mean, I don't know, but I'm sure a lot of people have worked very, very hard trying to come up with the best thing for the situation. The perfect solution would be if we managed to slap our fingers and the coronavirus went away and everyone got to sit their exams back in April and May, June. But that didn't happen. So we have as a group, as a country, as a world, to try and make the best of an awful situation. Now, until we know what is actually gonna happen on Thursday, there's not a lot we can do. Um, I can already see problems for some schools that have had a lot in place where there've been massive improvements, um, where there's been big changes going on, and for those schools, there is gonna be an appeals process, but it is a very limited appeals process this year. So I would ask that even if you're disappointed with your results but you've managed to, to get on to your next place to progress with your life then to be angry, to be upset but to not feel like that for too long. Um, I am going to be here all of Thursday um, helping you out guys. Good luck. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.